Hey everyone, this is Thomas Otten, and today the car we're going to be looking at is my 2000 Porsche Boxster S, and what we're going to be doing with it is the IMS bearing, which this car has well over 130,000 miles, and we have still not done the IMS bearing, so tune in and let's check it out. So it's February and it's winter in Texas and we've come under another freeze like we did last year, but in no way comparable to the uh, great freeze of uh, 2021 where we saw frozen uh, windmills and turbines not functioning and mostly the whole state kind of got just shut down. And we were without power for several days. Some of us took uh, some opportunities to have a little fun in that. So I decided to take the uh, the time to take the Boxster indoors and uh, do some much needed repairs during this uh, minor freeze that we've had. So this video is not going to be a detailed step-by-step -step of the IMS uh, replacement. This is more of an overview and uh, just uh, kind of just what's involved uh, in the process. We'll also be looking at some of the solutions that are out there uh, to solve this problem. Just a quick, quick overview. This is the uh, car. We've got it torn down so far um and there you see you can see the uh the flywheel of the motor and so this is what we've had to do to uh, get it to where we can uh, access this uh, ims bearing so we've got the uh we've got the motor the top um motor access panel removed we did that primarily so we could access the uh the top of the transmission bolts which uh, that one was very difficult to get to from behind from the bottom other than that we really didn't need to get up here at least not yet so this is just an overview of all the parts that had to come out of there in order to do this of course, we have the transmission. Had to be completely removed. Um, the whole bumper had to be removed from the rear. So we've got the bumper here. This is the uh, the frame bumper frame with heat shield. There you got a little made in Norway. There, pretty cool. Um, got our. Uh, our sway bar had to be removed. Um, clutch, clutch had to be removed, and this clutch is pretty, pretty bad shape. So it's a good thing we're doing this all at once. This needed to happen. Um, had to remove. Um, I didn't have to remove these. Um, these are the uh, the primary header slash catalytic converters. However, mine were um, you could tell once we took we we took this part off. You do have to remove the uh, the secondary catalytic converters, which are back back there. But when I did it, I found that my uh, catalytic converters were going bad, so went ahead and removed them to replace them. Um, we've got the main muffler, the rear muffler from the back. We had to remove the, uh, these are some braces that basically hold the, uh, the rear, um, suspension points. Kind of keeps everything together, locked together. 
uh, bracket, uh, and transmission mounts. So we're going to be replacing those also. Might as well. It's a good plate. And uh, just a bunch of little odds and ends. And uh, heat shield that had to come out. And so there's our, our motor from the top side. The access panel. And coming here, you can see we went ahead and removed the axles because they were in very bad shape. So go ahead and replace those while we can while we're in here. And um, so the next step is to uh, target the uh, flywheel and get at it. So looking inside uh, one of our catalytic converters, we could see it was basically coming apart. So um, basically needed to replace it. Now here we have our intermediate shaft from our traditional air-cooled 911 engine. The intermediate shaft rides on these two bearings. Now these, if you can see the hole there, that's an oil fed bearing. And this is basically called a flat bearing. There's no roll rolling bits in it. There's no ball bearings spinning around in it. So there is our intermediate shaft installed in the motor, or at least test fit in. And so this is where it would get fed right there with oil you see so the main crankshaft here spins this intermediate shaft which then spins the oil pump on the air-cooled 911 motor with your motor has all these of course oil passages in it and this is really the proper way the conventional way to feed to lubricate a bearing when it is uh, inside your inside your engine so what are your options when it comes to replacing the IMS bearing well one of the options is just to replace it with a factory bearing or one of the more robust um, ceramic bearings and then the idea is to just replace it every 40,000 miles or so, whatever the interval is. And the idea is to just replace it every time you do replace the clutch. Because you're in there and it's a few more steps to replace the IMS bearing. The downside to that is that um, you don't know if that IMS bearing is going to last for that interval. And some uh, have been known to last even shorter than uh, that interval. Another downside is that... Um, your clutch may indeed last longer than 40,000 miles, more service intervals. So another option would be to go with one of the kits that provides a constant feed of oil directly to the IMS bearing. Uh, one of the kits that's out there provides a, a solution of uh, replacing the IMS ball bearing with a, uh, with a flat bearing, which is with the oil feed directly to it. So the oil feed is uh, indicated here in this uh, drawing with the, the red arrow. Now with the, a system like that, um, you have to remember this requires a constant feed of oil. And so is there a potential for that oil line, because it's external to the engine, for it to be clogged or damaged? It's a possibility. Um, is it likely? Well, it's probably not too likely, but it, it, there is that potential. What should be noted is that the oil feed systems are not a redesign of the engine, but it is a pretty good solution for this problem. However, it should be noted that this is one of the more expensive options. Another variation of this is um, 
where you basically have an oil feed line going to an IMS bearing that is still the the ball bearing design, but where the back seal of the ball bearing is removed so that a, uh, a feed of oil can constantly be sprayed into that bearing. In general, the IMS bearing is lubricated by immersion, by splash, but primarily it's lubricated by that oil feed. So one could say here that you basically, you're kind of in the same boat where you have an oil line feeding the system that if that oil line were to be damaged, then um, you would not get that primary oil feed necessary to save that IMS bearing. Would it fail immediately? Probably not, but um, you never know. It might go unnoticed for a while that, that this oil feed is not is not supplying. How likely is that? Again, it's probably not likely, but it is possible. So this is the system we're gonna be installing on this car, which is basically the last one we spoke about, which is the uh, basic IMS ball bearing with the oil feed system. And of course, to remove the, uh, the bumper, it necessitated removing the, uh, the little rear spoiler that it has here. So, uh, nothing too difficult, but just, just giving an overview of what, what this entails. Um, so originally when I got this car, it was originally a had already a hundred, over a hundred thousand miles on it, just over a hundred thousand. And, um, yeah, I bought it, bought it from my father and, um, yeah, um, so it's, it's been a pretty good car. I've not done a whole lot to it though. I've just driven it. And, um, so now it's time to, uh, to do a little work on it. Especially the IMS, it's always been something um, on my mind that needs to be done. And um, originally, we uh, when I got it, I put this thing called the IMS Guardian in there, and it's got some cabling here. I'm going to be removing all that. I've never found that system to be very good. Who, who knows if it really worked or not but the problem i always had with it was that the uh the way, well, the way it worked is it it had a, a sensor that would go on the on the drain plug right there and that sensor would basically detect if there's any metal in the oil which is kind of a neat idea. It comes from the aircraft industry. The problem was that the Boxster being so low to the ground and that sensor with wires coming out of it constantly was ripped off. So I replaced, I think, I think I replaced it once or twice. And after that, I just said, forget this. Um, just happened too often. So anyways... So here we have uh, my son. This is a car we've been restoring. My son and I have been restoring. He's been doing most of the work, but we've been working on it together in a lot of ways. And this is a 1987 924S. So um, basically got this car in sort of so-so shape and we're we basically just finished a paint job on it. We're so we're reassembling it, getting it all reassembled. Um, did our own custom dash reupholstery on it. Came out very well in leather. So this is the 924S, which is essentially a 944 under all of this, but it's got the narrow body, which uh, my son actually prefers over the 9. 44 and in a lot of ways I have to agree it it kind of the 924 definitely had a 
kind of a neat look to it without the flares and so on. Not that the 944 doesn't look interesting and cool with the flares and everything, but I have to say the, the 924, it, it's got its own appeal, its own charm in its own right. So that is uh, 924S. And um, and you see here we just put the uh, actual factory decals on there. And it looks really good. The paint is it's dirty now, but it's basically really, really good shape now. So this is going to be a neat car, and we'll show some videos of that too once this gets more presentable. So what came in the mail while I was working on the car was the new Jethro Toll CD, which is the first Jethro Toll CD that I've ever obtained when it came out. I've always been lagging behind, although it's probably uh, one of my favorite bands, Ian Anderson. I must say, I don't really um, like the album cover. It seems like a very dark, dark uh, brooding figure, almost like Satan or something. I don't know. But anyway, I like the uh, classic, more uh, artistic toll covers, and of course this great one. So I bring it up because I subtitled this video after one of the songs on this CD, and the song is Where Did Saturday Go? And um, although... And, you know, it's kind of like one of those things where you're working on your car or you're working on some project and then, boom, it's already Sunday and already you start thinking about work again. And so that song, Where Did Saturday Go?, just sort of uh, played in my ear. So, and um, of all the songs on the CD, I think it's the uh, the real gem on the, uh, the CD. I would love to play a little bit of it, on, but I probably get some sort of uh, copyright strike. So I'll just leave a little uh, link in the description and uh, you guys can uh, check it out for yourself. Okay, so this is the kit from uh, Team RS Motorsports. So here we have the this is the uh, direct oil feed kit for the IMS. So this provides the, the flow of oil. And then also in the kit, the kit came with two IMS bearings, a single row and a double row. And the reason I went with that is because I was not exactly sure which one is in this car, so I'll return the one that I don't need. And then also a set of new um, new flywheel bolts. Speaking of where did Saturday go, we have come to the end of this episode. Unfortunately, uh, this episode has gotten uh, much longer than I thought thought it would be, and now um, I haven't even shown the install of the IMS bearing, which we will do on the very next episode on this channel. We uh, thank you for watching. We ask you if you enjoy this sort of thing to like and subscribe, and that helps us gauge interest. Until next time, juice. <laughs>